something that I have a passion for, and that's sharing the gospel with people. Um, to be able to share with people who Jesus is, why he came, and, and what it is to believe in him. So this isn't thorough, but again, it's an outline. And um, they've memorized this. It's an acronym of gospel, G-O-S-P-E-L. And they're going to show that with you now.
named Betsy Ross, who was asked by General George Washington if she would make the first official flag of this new country. Betsy, I would like to make a flag for our colonists as a symbol of independence from England. Here's a sketch of what I thought about the flag. Why not have five printed stars instead of six printed ones? Five printed stars are easier to sell and waste less cloth. Also, I think it would look better if, as a rectangle rather than a square. After eight years of brand new countries founding, the United States of America, I went on to be our very first president, and I'm considered to be the father of our country. I'm well known for my passionate speech and style. I also offered support to the revolution and fought for the honest government for the rest of my life. My words were used on July 4, 1776 to announce to Great Britain so that the 13 colonies in America were declared independence and later became the third president of, America, of the United States. This was something the world had never seen before, a government created of the people, by the people, and for the people. It seemed as this great experiment was working better than anyone could have imagined, but Sally and this great new nation founded on freedom, not on men and women were free. There were a group of people called slaves who were treated very unfairly. One of these slaves grew up to be one of the bravest Americans that ever lived. Harriet Tubman, who was, was known as the Underground Railroad, Harriet became free herself and then went on to save hundreds of others, risking getting arrested or even killed. She traveled at night in the direction of the stars to tell her which way to go. Harriet was so intent on helping others to get free, she was known to force her own people at gunpoint if they got scared and tried to turn back. I know you were treated terribly as a young girl. How did you make it through those hard years? My mother taught me as many, as many battle stories as she could. I also remember asking God to be with me. My favorite story was always Moses, and that became my nickname because, like Moses in the Bible, I led many people to freedom. Here, tell us one of your favorite, bu favorite stories that the children might like to hear. Well, one time I was afraid I would be found out from a former slave owner that had me. So I dressed up like an old lady taking my chickens to market. Sure enough, I was walking on the road and here came Dr. Thompson. I yanked him right for me. I yanked on those ropes that are holding those chickens. Those chickens are flying and now I'm chasing them. Dr. Thompson was so taken with Dr. that he didn't even suspect it was me. He even called out, Go Granny! <laughs> wow, what a story. We would love to hear much more. Well, unfortunately, you have to keep going. Thank you so much for co coming, Mrs. Tubman. Another great person in our history that was affected by slavery and the pretty juice that was surrounded by George Washington Carver. In fact, we were honored to have him right here with us. Dr. Carver, you were born a slave that grew up to be the world fam famous scientist. Isn't that right? That's right. All my life, I learned everything I could from everything and everyone around me. I just love to take walks and listen to study the plants daily. At seven years old, I had such a green thumb that I was called the plant doctor, and people would come to me to, to ask what to do about their sick plant. When I was ten, I packed what little I had and began moving from one town to another, going to school in each town, learning everything I could from each teacher. Children, Dr. Carver was admired and loved by all who knew him. He was even honored by the President of the United States. Thank you, Dr. Carver, for coming. You're welcome. Our next guest is a mystery. Let's see if you can guess who he is. So, sir, you failed in business? Yes. You tried another business and failed? Your fantasy died? Yes. You had a nervous breakdown the next year? Yes. In 43, you ran for Congress and were, de and were defeated? Yes. Tried again in 43 and were defeated again? Yes. You ran for 70 and 55? Yes. You lost? Yes. The next year, you ran for 
vice president and lost. Yes. In 59, you ran for second again and lost. Am I right, sir? Yes. You had a quite difficult life, haven't you, sir? Yes, I did from quite an experience. Then finally, your time came in 1860 when you were elected the 16th president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the difference between history's boldest accomplishments and worst failures is simply the diligence to persevere. Of course, Abraham Lincoln went down in history as possibly the most beloved president in history. So remember that the next time you feel like giving up, four score and seven years ago, our father brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the idea that all men are created equal. Wisconsin, a very ordinary farm family had a little girl named Laura. She had to help her family on the farm and had many interesting adventures. When she grew up, she had a family of her own. One day, Laura's daughter named Rose asked her a very thoughtful question that changed Laura's life. Mother, I don't love it and when you talk, tell about growing up on the farm and all the interesting places you moved to and all the adventures you had. What do you think about writing a book of all your adventures? Hmm, why Rose? I think that's a wonderful idea. I think I'll call it Little House in the Big Woods. Well, the rest is history. You all know the stories about the little house on the prairie where English Wilder went on to write seven more books which have been read and loved by children all over the world. Wow, and during this time, millions of people from all over the world came as immigrants to try to make a better life for themselves and their families. In return, they brought their own customs and culture, which have helped us to become the great diverse nation we are today. Since October 28, 1886, many of those immigrants have landed on Ellis Island in New York and were greeted by a beautiful statue, which has since become one of the most recognized symbols of freedom and democracy. Keep
He stood on the roof of your tool shed and slid down in a box of a makeshift trap. You worked really hard making this trap, but in the end, you crashed. That's right. I was so excited. It was like flying. I wanted to fly so badly. But my mother, my parents made, it to, made us tear it down, but I never forgot the thrill. When I got older, I thought my parents would pay for my flying lessons, but they couldn't. So I did work at the post office and photograph work. Did you also find someone who would teach you? teach you to fly and let you pay when you had money? That's right. She was the first woman pilot, pilot in the world. She she understood. So she must have understood my love for flying. Did you hope to get a job flying? Oh no. There were no pilot, women pilots in those days. I just love flying so much. On June 1st, 1937, took off for one more flight around the world. Oh my goodness, time has flown. Your story is so fantastic that I didn't realize how late it's getting. Thank you so much for coming. I wish we had more time to learn about your amazing adventures and the mystery that surrounds your life. Thank you so much for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, give Miss Earhart another hand. Thank you. 
before she reveals her real identity. Are you ready, Mr. Yes? I'm ready. First clue. I was born in Tessie, the Alabama, and I cannot go to school for white children blind. Second clue. I visit Detroit with my brother, thinking it would be a better place to live where people didn't have to worry about whether they were in the white section or the black section of the place. But in the end, it didn't seem much different than Alabama. People still treated us poorly. It made them mad. It was very wrong. Third clue. People, people thought I sat in the white section of the bus because they thought I was old and tired. The truth is that I was 42 and just tired of the unfairness of it all. It was... Do you know who I am yet? Some of you do. Of course I am. Rosa Parks. There's one more interesting fact about me I would like to share. I got to meet Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of President Franklin Roosevelt. She was a great encouragement to me because even though she was white, she also believed in equality for all, and here she is. Thank you, Mrs. Parks. You've been such an encouragement to me. I wish I could have met you sooner. <laughs> I don't know if you know this about me, but once I was in an all-white section of an auditorium in Birmingham, and I felt very uncomfortable, so I moved to the black section across the aisle. The police officer told me I had broken the law, so I had a chair put in the middle of the aisle and sat there. The next year, I was free from the daughters of the American Revolution because they wouldn't let a famous black singer named Marion Anderson sing in their auditorium. It just wasn't right. It wasn't because 
black and white children went into separate schools in New Orleans, the black children were not able to receive the same education as the white children. In 1960, a judge ordered Ruby Bridges, a six-year-old black girl, to go to the first grade in all-white school. We, we sat in church and prayed that we all be strong and that we have courage and we get through any trouble. We prayed long and we prayed hard. If I remember correctly, Large crowds of angry white people stood outside the school while Ruby walked by escorted by further marshals who carried guns. That's right. Every morning on the way to school, Ruby would stop and pray for the people who hated her. Then she would pray for them again on the way home. Ruby, tell us what your teacher thought you were doing when you came to the school that one day. Oh yes, I remember. My teacher, Mrs. Hurley, said she had been watching me and was surprised when I stopped to talk to Amy Mom that I had to walk past that day. Mrs. Hurley didn't believe me when I told her that I didn't talk to them. And she even got upset with me. And I was praying for those people. So you were praying for the people who hated you? What did you say? Oh, I remember. I said, please God, try to forgive those people. Because even if they say those bad things, we don't know what they're doing. So could you forgive them just like you did those folks a long time ago when they say terrible things about you? Wow, what a powerful testimony of the difference Christ can make in someone who is willing to be obedient to him and love their enemies think you will be in this bridges. We can't talk about American history without mentioning all the unsung heroes who have made this country an amazing place for us all to live. Mothers, fathers, teachers, workers, and of course, our brave men and women who have made this ultimate sacrifice to serve in our country in the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World Wars One and Two, the Korean War, the Dominican Civil War, the Vietnam War, the multinational force in Lebanon, the invasions of Grenada and Panama, the Gulf War, the Somali Civil War, the intervention of, in Haiti, the Bosnian and Kosovo Wars, the Iraq of Afghanistan Wars, the war in Northwest Pakistan, the military intervention in Libya, the military intervention against us, our police and firemen.
Mr. Cruz, our special guest, Mrs. Gould. We'd also like to thank all you wonderful parents for videotaping our production. We'd especially like to thank Mrs. Jenks for helping us with costumes and props. We'd especially like to thank, thank Mrs. Lazarski for writing this awesome play for us. And finally, we'd, like, we'd also like to thank moms and dads and family members and friends for helping us get ready for our play. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for helping us with this play, and thank you that you have given us such wonderful families, and that you have provided so many wonderful people throughout American history to inspire us and teach us so many things. Amen. Just one more thing. If you're able to help put chairs away and help carry all of our props and things back to the classroom, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for, thank you for, for helping. Thank you again for being here.